Welcome to the Wealth Matters Podcast, where investors come together to better understand how to build passive cash flow and create generational wealth without all the confusing mumbo jumbo. Here's your host and co author of Amazon number one bestseller, Alpesh Pamar. Welcome to Wealth Matters Podcast. We are going to have another doctor after a while. So Dr. Nancy Wynn is a physician, eye surgeon, entrepreneur, and impact real estate investor. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me, Alpash. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Nancy started investing in real estate to create passive income, hoping to regain control of her time and stop trading time for money. She currently owns and operates a real estate investment portfolio in the Atlanta area, one of my favorite markets, as I was telling you, Nancy, earlier. (laughs) Great market. Very sizzling hot, as I was was telling you earlier. (laughs) No, that's, that's awesome. So I'm looking forward to this episode because I also believe in investing with impact, right? It's very important because all of us want to make money. All of us want to sp- stop trading time for money. But in the end, we should have, we have capability to make an impact and we should be making an impact on the, uh, you know, how we invest maybe in the community, how we go for, uh, you know, bringing new tenants, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to this episode. We ask this question to everyone. First question, tell us something funny or interesting about yourself. Something interesting is that most of my dreams are in Chinese. So I speak English in most settings, um, at home, at work, but Chinese was my first language. So I don't know right. if that has something to do with it. So, but a lot of my dreams are actually in Chinese. <laughs> wow, that, that is interesting. Hopefully they all come true. So <laughs> <laughs> some of them, some of them. <laughs> uh, how did you get started with real estate and where was it? Yeah. So um, just a little background story to give context to it. I spent many years in school and training to become a doctor and right. an eye surgeon. <laughs> and so, you know, I've had the privilege over the past decade just to help a bunch of people with their vision and get it perform awesome sight saving eye surgeries. And I really like what I do, but as I was practicing over the years, I got a real taste of what the practice of medicine was really like. And I was frustrated by the lack of autonomy and that medicine wasn't as secure as I thought it was, you know, I was making a great income, but I was also just like everyone else who has a job. I was one call away from them telling me that my income was going to be cut because of leadership changes or one phone call away. Right. And one phone call away saying that, you know, the reimbursements for my services were going to be cut because, you know, the insurance companies decided that they didn't want to pay you as much or the government has some new policy. So yes, while I was making a great income, I felt like that income was also out of my control and completely at risk. So because of these experiences, um, I just knew there had to be a better way. And I did research and started getting really empowered with my education. And that's when I discovered that real estate was a great way to build wealth and generate passive income. So that's how I got started. Um, I started off with buying a duplex right in my backyard in Atlanta. And that kicked off my real estate investing career. And when was it? That was uh, right in the middle of COVID. So right out like March, 2020, basically. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So I told you I bought my duplex in Atlanta area, mm-hmm. Gainesville in 2018, but you started right around COVID. Wow. Yeah. How I made it, it a out? point. <laughs> it, it worked out great. You know, I, I started that year. I was like, this is what I'm going to do this year. Right. And then COVID hit, right? January. That was like my new year's thing. And then COVID hit. But I, I just said, I'm going to go forward with it. I have my education and I'm making an informed choice. And it was, you know, we'll, we'll, we could talk about it more, but it was, it's one of my best investments. Oh, really? Today. Okay. Yeah. In my portfolio. Yeah. No, so we can, we can talk about it. I, I want to know how much did you pay? What's the rent? What are you doing with it? Did you do any upgrades? Yeah. So it, it is a duplex in a great area with uh, strong rental demand, um, but also with appreciation. So uh, the purchase price was 230K. That's, uh, that's good. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, especially for that area. Um, basically, you know, when COVID hit, everyone was just freaking out. They, did, they thought right. the market was going to crash. So there were some good deals to be had if you looked for them. And this yeah. was one of them. So this property was pretty turnkey. There was a tenant already on one side. Okay. Um, living in a unit. So from day one, I was able to get cash flow and 
didn't need to do anything. The other side just needed some very minor upgrades that I was able to do within a week. And then quickly I got another tenant in. So currently um, both sides rent for 1400 on oh, each that's, side. That's, that's great. That's, yeah. That's and and this is rule. like, right. And it has increased in rent like 200 bucks <laughs> over the past year already. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, I paid for my duplex, I think 190, but that was mm-hmm. back in uh, 2019. And I'm getting same thing around 2200 rent in yeah. Gainesville. So that's, that's and great. you know, in the right, I'll pass, you know, in the Atlanta market, you don't find those deals anymore. No, nope, you'll nope. be lucky if you find something that cash yeah. flows, particularly in a good part of town. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I never looked for it because I moved on from a single family yes. duplex into, and I think you did too, but yes. yeah, it's very hard to find deals in any real estate right now. So I have another question because I interviewed a a physician most probably i think a couple of years ago so it's been a while what parallels do you see with being a physician or surgeon and a real estate investor there are many but i'll highlight a couple for you and i i i've thought about this as i've gone on my real estate journey and there are so many parallels and the skills are very transferable so i'm just going to list a couple for you and your audience One is decision-making. As a doctor, you're always making decisions, the best treatment for patients, how to proceed with a surgical procedure. So you have to weigh the pros and cons of what you're doing, right? Nothing is ever guaranteed. It's all about probability. Um, So when I'm initiating a treatment of a patient, I think that's the best treatment for them. And based on studies and probability that likely is, but I'm never a hundred percent sure. And it's the same thing with real estate, right? As we're evaluating pro formas and doing all this analysis, we think we're making the best decision, but it's never a hundred percent guarantee. So I think just using the information that we're given and then making the best informed decision is one thing that I see the parallel of being a doctor and then a real estate investor is that decision-making process. Um, And then the second is communication. Um, As a doctor, I have to communicate with a variety (laughs) of people, right? From other doctors to nurses, to patients, to family members, to the front front staff person. And same in real estate. There are so many players, brokers, lenders, property managers, your tenants. It really requires a a very... (sighs) superior communication skills so you could get across your point and making it so that the person, the party understands. And then the third thing I think is just um, the flexibility and the ability to be able to pivot. So for instance, yeah, (laughs) yeah. So I'll give you an example. And I thought about this is when I'm doing eye surgery, I would say the majority of time you, you kind of just go in the rhythm and you know what right. to expect and it, it comes out successful, but there's that always one or two cases that give you trouble and it, you didn't quite expect it to go that way. What do you do? You don't quit. You have to find a way to pivot and say, yes. well, this is a situation I'm dealt with. So now what do I do? Okay. I do X, Y, and Z to get to the end point to complete the surgery. And it's the same for real estate. It's not a straight line. Yeah. Things are going to be, have unexpected things come up, the roof leaking or, you know, a tenant not play, paying. And then you have to say, okay, this is the hand I'm dealt with right now. What is the next best step? What is my next logical best step? So I think just being flexible, taking all the information and being able to pivot with whatever situation you're given. And then lastly, it's just, um, I would say being a team player, because even though I'm the doctor and I'm the surgeon, I don't do it alone. I can't yes. do see the, yeah, I can't do the, see the patients or do the surgeries alone in surgery. For instance, I have a whole team around me. I have right. the anesthesiologist who has to um, anesthetize the patient for me to do the surgery. And then I have my surgical assistant who sets up all the instruments and tools that I need and hands them to me during the surgery. And then my nursing staff who helps take care of the patient before and after the surgery. So without them, I can't do my job. And if you think about it as a real estate investor, 
can you do your job all alone and purchase a property and manage it no. and all that? No, no. Yeah. You need your, <laughs> your brokers, your lenders, your yeah, property um, manager to yeah, insurance. Agent. Yeah. Yeah. And inspectors and all that. Yep, so, yep. so those are kind of the key points that I see really the parallels. And I think that can apply to anyone in different professions. Right. If you look close enough, you'll see that you have a lot of transferable yes. skills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm an engineer. Then I know running the numbers, <laughs> looking at, you know, underwriting due diligence. That's what, you know, I can transfer. Right. Yes. But I didn't think about communication because you, you have to communicate with so many different people and you have to dump it down for mm -hmm. a lot of the people. Right. If you uh, use the, you know, medical jargons, no one will understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Like for instance, like if I am talking to another doctor, I could use that medical jargon. Exactly. Right. right. <laughs> so if you're talking to another real estate investor, they understand what IR yeah, is or yeah. equity motor, cash on cash. Yes. But if you're talking to a lay person, you have to dumb it yep. down for them. Yep. Same thing with patients, a lot of patients. Yeah. No, that, that's great. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the impact investing. What mm -hmm. exactly is impact real estate investing? In a nutshell, um, impact real estate investing just means that you're combining philanthropy with real estate investing. So the primary goal of impact real estate investing is that you're going to make good financial returns because that's why we're all investing in the yes. first place, right? But while you're doing that, you could also make a positive social or an environmental impact. Um, and before, you know, the idea used to be like, yeah, you're going to make your financial gains. And then the philanthropy or doing good is the other part. You just kind of donate money to some cause. But right. um, with impact real estate investing, you can really integrate the two, right? And it really helps investors and people align their inv investments with their values. And it, I, I like to liken it to you become a more purposeful investor. So just like, you know, you, uh, there's this movement with... Um, conscious consumerism, right? Where people are buying uh, organic products or buying products from companies they believe in, like Tom Shoes yes. or Warby Parker, the buy one, get one. Yep. It's the same concept with impact real estate investing, where people are just becoming more conscious investor um, because they're being more purposeful with what they're investing in and knowing that their investments can also do good. So with real estate, for instance, um, like apartments, which is what I love to invest in, it's just a natural tool to do this because the, the, the asset itself is just prime for that, right? You're creating great yeah. living spaces for residents. You're creating communities for people to thrive in, in these apartment communities. And then you, you upgrade the whole entire neighborhood around you. Um, so I think um, it, real estate investing is just a prime tool to be able to make that positive social impact. That's a great explanation. So I have a couple more questions. One is, how did you get an idea of impact investing? What how was did your I? Why? Yeah. How did you? How did you get an idea that you want to? This is impact investing, and you want to do. Um, you want to make an impact. I wanted to make sure that the money that I put into whatever investments <laughs> was going to make up some sort of impact. Um, and knowing that I, I'm changing lives or at least making an impact on some lives. And then, you know, as I mentioned, I invest in apartments. So that is one way I make an impact. But the other way is that I very early on said, I have a cause I believe in, uh, which is curing preventable blindness. And I'm going to direct some of those funds for my real estate profits to support this cause. And um, another real famous syndicator, Whitney Sewell um, from uh, LifeBridge Capital, yeah. does something very similar as he uses yes. real estate um, to support the cause of adoption, which is adoption. something he believes in. So I would encourage investors to think about, you know, not just uh, making a positive social impact with your investments, but think about what do you really want to do to change, change a certain thing or a cause that you're really passionate about and kind of, you know, pivot some of your investments towards that to, so that, you know, you have a why behind why you're investing. The money's great. I mean, don't get me wrong. You have to right. make profits. That's, that's a solid fact. But if you think about what can we as real estate investors um, how can we make a invest with a deeper purpose? And I think that is so powerful. If you could think of that. No, oh, that's, that's a great point. So how can like, of, of course you and I understand this and we look for these opportunities, but how can passive investors 
find this kind of opportunities where they can also make imp- uh, you know impact it doesn't have to be that hard as i said <clears throat> if you're thinking about using real estate um to invest there can be a number of operators or real estate opportunities where you're making not just the impact on the residents like we talked about in the communities but also environmental right with low yes. flow toilets saving the environment um, going green, green recycling, LED, uh, exactly, solar exactly. So all those things, those <laughs> little things that you don't think about, and it doesn't require like you taking your money and then having to devote it to another cause. Like we're talking about, it could just be the actual investment itself. You look carefully, you know, just ask, is there a way that the, what I'm investing in is making an impact in any way? It could be small from one person to a large group of people, to an entire neighborhood, and then just on the environment itself, like we're talking about. So I don't think there's like one thing that you need to ask, but as you're thinking about what you're investing in, like even a company when you're investing in the stock market, like is that a company's values that you support? Is this something that you want to align yourself with? Um, and it's more than just the financial gains at that point. It's like, you know, your, your values align when you're investing and then you're purposeful basically with where you're putting your money to support causes that are important to you. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And, and you know, I started with single family, uh, duplexes, apartment, and then moved on to mobile home park and senior housing mm-hmm. just for this purpose, because I thought mm-hmm. affordable housing is becoming such a rampant issue in America, right? Mm-hmm. And mobile home parks, what better way than, you know, um, go to mobile home parks, make them nicer, better for people to live in. And as well as take care of our seniors by, you know, uh, building our brand new, nice residential assisted facilities. So I can totally imagine or at least relate uh, what you are trying to do as well. (laughs) Yeah, basically, I think we're on the same uh, page is basically we're trying to unleash that power of capital for good. And I think with real estate investing or any type of investing, you can really solve some of the world's most pressing problem. Like you said, affordable housing or even healthcare. If you provide better living spaces for people, you're not just providing a roof over their head. You could improve their entire health and all the consequences that can be associated with that. So yes, um, I think it's powerful. So I have one more question. Can you share an example about your deal where you made an impact, you knew or you were able to see that there was an impact on the people living there or maybe environmentally? Yeah, absolutely. So I was able to visit one of the (laughs) apartment complexes that I um, invested in. And I'll highlight a couple of things. One is they had this children's learning center um, on, on, on the on the apartment community. And basically it was a center where children can come after school, do their homework, and they have free tutors for them. So it's just a way for the kids to stay out of trouble. Yeah. And then Uh when um, the Atlanta Braves play, they often take them to the game. So it's like a field trip. So it it really builds, you know, brotherhood, sisterhood, and just being surrounded by people. So you're not going out on the streets, not knowing what you're doing. So I thought that was really powerful in terms of investing in the children of the community. And then the other thing that I saw in a lot of these communities I invest in is that they uh, really promote uh, health and wellness. So often we see playgrounds, right? Dog parks, those are all promotion. Yeah. But the one thing that I saw on this property was that they had a vegetable garden. Isn't oh, that wow. awesome? That's yeah, amazing. so it's yeah. a community garden where they plant it and people can just go get their vegetables there, you know, fresh nice. vegetables. So it was really promoting healthy eating and that lifestyle. And they even have um, monthly kind of wellness, yoga, mindfulness nice. type of thing for there. the rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so those are some of the, you know, kind of little things that you might be like, ah, oh, just yeah. a dog park, just a playground. But really, yes. if you think about living there, it promotes a sense of community wellness and it makes an impact because now that's their home. No, and that's a great point. You know, when you and I are making some money from our day jobs, right? We don't think about, we take all of these amenities as granted, right? That, yeah, Yeah. we deserve it or we have it no matter what, where we live, we got dog park (laughs) or this yoga center, but people who live in those apartments, they don't get those amenities, right? right? So if we provide them, that's a a huge deal for them. No, I, I love it. So another question I have, and that's not for impact, but I, I don't see, of course, when I started, I didn't see a lot of women in real estate. In last five years, of course, it has changed and I love it. 
tell me about this importance of investing, especially for women. So we hear a lot about gaps as women. So yep. gender pay gap. Yep. Um, there's something called a resume gap. So when, when, <laughs> yeah. So when people take time off, women take time off to raise children. They're often concerned that when they come back, they lost their, like, they've lost their skill. But the one gap that I don't hear enough is the gender investing gap. Yes. Um, we know from studies that women are less likely to invest than men. And even when they do invest, they tend to wait until they're older to invest. Right. And I, I think it's important, particularly for women to start investing, whether it be in the stock, if that's what they believe in. I, I firmly believe in real estate um, to start making that investment because there's, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's just financial independence and freedom, right? Um, we know that women get paid less than their male colleagues in the same yeah. job position. So they make about 83 cents to the dollar is what's been shown on average. So having a lower income, just that baseline lower income means that they can't achieve their financial goals as quickly. And so I think that's why women should take advantage of investment opportunities to compensate for that reduced income. Not to say we should tolerate it, but in the meantime, while we're trying to make changes and stuff, you could right. kind of take control and make what money that you do have work for you even harder. Um, so it, it's important that um, to invest because I think investing is one of the best ways that women can um, you know, accumulate more wealth and accumulate the same amount of wealth as men um, so they could could be, you know, more financially secure. And the other thing is, you know, for women um, and for men, um, <clears throat> it, it's important that they have that financial stability to walk away from bad situations, yes. whether it be a bad job or a bad relationship. Um, sometimes women stay in relationships or in jobs that are not serving them or right. even hurting them. But when you have that financial freedom and your own financial strong foundation, you could walk away easily, more easily um, wow. than someone who does not. Wow, I did not think of that. That's, that's a great, great point. <laughs> yeah. And then just a couple other things is that it really comes in handy when women take career breaks. Um, yeah. it, it's been shown that women tend to take more career breaks than men right. um, at various stages of their life, such as when they get married or start having children yeah. and they want to take off. Or when they have to, you know, go to another city with their spouse who gets transferred for a job. I've seen that happen, right? So yes. there's this break in income, whether it be a couple months or years. And if you invest, you kind of have that safety ground to keep you during those transition periods. And then lastly, it's just for retirement as you age, because women on average live longer live than longer. men. Yeah. So you're going to need more money than, than your husband. You know, the marriage is going to end at some point, <laughs> whether it be divorce or death. So, yeah, right. um, yeah, so, the D so we, exactly. So just having that kind of longer runway for, for women investing can provide that. So those are just some of the reasons I think like for women in particular, they should really consider and need to invest in my opinion. Oh, thank you for sharing that. So let's talk about real estate now. What kind of assets and markets are you focused on right now and why? Mm -hmm. I am focused on multifamily, so apartments. Um, I think it still provides great returns with very low volatility. And if you think about it, housing is a basic new human need. Everyone yes. needs a roof so, over their yeah. head. So that is not going to change whether the inflation rate is 8 or 8.5% 8 or who's president or any of those factors, right. everyone needs housing. And that's why I love in investing in um, the asset class of apartments. And if you think about it, people prioritize their housing right. needs over everything, regardless yep. of economic distress. Yep. Um, this was seen during the pandemic because multifamily occupancy, they stayed the same when office or retail spaces was practically empty, right? right. Because of the pandemic. And then I, I also like it because there's a strong demand, um, with, in, especially now with rising home prices, younger people who might not want to buy a home and like the flexibility and mobility. And then even older people as they retire, they, they don't want to own their home anymore and just rent. So I think that demand is always there. Um, and then just, as I said, it's a very stable stable class and historically has done very well. Um, even during the housing crisis, the default rate was like 
oh two or something like that. Right. Um, in terms of default rate compared to 6% with single family. So as an asset right. class, it's just very stable and something that everyone will really need. So that's, that's why I invest in apartments. Nice. Which markets are you focused on? Then? I am kind of all over. Okay. <laughs> Obviously I love my home market of Atlanta and the Southeast. So we invest in, in our backyard in Atlanta, but also in the Carolinas. Yeah. And we also invest in the South and Texas and then starting to get into the Midwest as well. So we, or we like to be diversified. Oh, that's great. What has been your best real estate deal so far and why? Yeah, I think we, we kind of touched upon it, but it was actually my first deal, yeah. it, the duplex in, in, in the suburb of Atlanta. And as I said, there was already a tenant on one side, the other side, I was able to place a tenant in really quickly. The property was almost turnkey. Um, and I bought it at a great price It's a high demand area. So vacancy is very low and people tend to stay and the appreciation has just brought the values up, you know, significantly over six figures over the past two years. So that, um, is still one of my best deals <laughs> done. Oh, that's awesome. What has been your worst deal? If that has been any, <laughs> Gosh. Um, so this was something I invested years ago before I was serious and got really educated. So I always heard like real estate is a great way. You know, you, you got to get into real estate because real estate is the way. Um, so I heard about these crowdfunding platforms. So literally I went on one, look at the returns and the numbers. And I was like, yeah, this one seems pretty good and click, click, click. And I basically invested you know, tens of thousands of dollars into one, into a hotel development. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, because it was a development, there was no cash flow. Right. And there were a couple of capital calls on the project. Oh, capital calls. Ooh. Yes. And the returns wasn't as expected. So I really right. learned a lot of lessons um, and have since really got it, gotten educated. But I'll, I'll share with your audience and you some of the lessons I learned. One is know what you're investing in. Yes. I, I knew nothing about hotels or hotel development. So I really had no business getting in on that. It's just like, well, a hotel, um, the numbers look good. Let me just click on it. Don't do that. Don't make the same mistake that I did. So really get educated about what you're investing in and, and know the ins and out. And then the second is to vet the deal, vet the sponsors, the business plan, make sure it's in alignment with what you want to do. Like for instance, like if you want cash flow and as a development, that's not going to align with your goals. Um, so that leads me to kind of to my third point is define your investing goals and what you want out of investing. Um, that is the starting point. It's not, you know, look at the deal, start looking at deals, um, start vetting things, just really define what you want out of real estate and then start looking and work backwards towards how do I achieve that? Um, because for instance, if you want both cash flow and equity, you're going to look at different deals than if you just want, you know, equity. So right. really define what you want. So you could, you could eliminate a bunch of stuff and just focus on, on, on the deals that work for you. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all these golden nuggets. Let's take a quick break. And after the break, we'll go to the same questions I ask every guest. You're listening to the Wealth Matters Podcast. The Wealth Matters Podcast. For more info about what we do, check us out at wealthmatters.com. It's wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, matters, M-A-T-R-S, dot com. Welcome back to Wealth Matters Podcast. Nancy said a lot of golden nuggets about investing for doing good as well as why women should be investing also the market and the mistakes she has made so thank you nancy for sharing all that are you ready for fire round let's do it okay would you be changing any business or investment strategy after this pandemic is over i think it's over but <laughs> <laughs> who knows it, it might right. be another wave um well the pandemic has certainly affected every aspect of our life from you know our daily lives the child care the health of millions but the one thing that it hasn't affected is kind of my investment strategy i think um the asset class that i've chosen to invest in as i mentioned apartments is very stable so overall my investment strategy has not changed um in terms of real estate investing um, I'm still investing my capital into real estate and not really pulling out. I know there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, but overall apartments has been a very stable and resilient asset class. I believe in it. However, one thing that I am looking more closely at is the deal itself and 
the debt structure with the rising interest rates and, and inflation yes. and seeing how people are underwriting that and operators and seeing if it makes sense and, and, and if the underwriting is conservative enough. But in terms of what I'm investing in, that, that's, that has not changed and likely will not change. Got it. Favorite real estate or finance or any other related book? I have so many favorite books, um, <laughs> but the one that I'm currently rereading right now is not directly business or real estate, but has a lot of applications is Atomic Habit by James oh, Clear. Yes. Did you read that book? Yes, it's a great book. Yeah, yeah. It, it is so wonderful. And, and some of the key points that I'm taking away as I'm rereading it um, and is applicable to real estate or finance or yeah. really any area of life is um, the compounding effect of really small changes, right? Right? Often we want this overnight success and overnight wealth, but he really makes it a point. James Kerr really makes it a point that changes that seem really small and not making a lot of difference can actually have a great impact over the long haul. If you have enough patience, even that 1% incremental improvement, if you look dear, years down the line, you'll see that, wow, you know, um, how often do we think that someone is an overnight success, but really they've built it up over yeah. years. So that's, that's something I really took away from it. And then the other thing is just like the importance of identity um, because he, he makes it a point that um, the most effective way to change your habit is really to change your identity because your identity, yes. I always like to think of it as your thermostat. If you're going to set your thermostat at 70, you're going to just remain there, right? It doesn't nice. matter about external circumstances, but if you want to one up a level and turn it up to 80, 90, 100, 140, you're going to reach to that level. So that's the most powerful force, I think, is just you have to take on that identity, whatever it is. So those are kind of, you know, some some key takeaways that I've um, taken away from the book as I'm rereading it currently. Oh, that's great. Any tool or website you recommend or you cannot live without? I really like this website called Unsplash. Um, they have beautiful images and photos that you could download yes. and use for any projects for free. And I've used it for a lot of blog posts, social media posts, even presentations. And I love that it's so diverse and completely free. Yeah. So unsplash. Oh, thank you. Any advice for beginner investors? Um, I would say I have two pieces of advice. Um, one, get educated and then take action. So whenever people who are interested in getting in real estate ask me, what should I do first? I always tell them, get your education first because that will pay the best dividends for you. Because if you don't have that education, you're just kind of blindly doing whatever, like I did with that hotel, you know, investment. Um, right. And what really part st stops people from, from starting is really fear, right? Fear of the unknown. And then what dispels that fear is getting knowledge and education, but it doesn't stop there. You really have to take action because knowledge in and of self doesn't do anything. It's really knowledge and action that leads to the result. So first get educated and then take action. And then the second thing um, I would leave with your audience um, as advice is um, really just go for progress and not perfection. Um, yeah. It's something that I have to remind myself of yeah. daily because perfection will really kill your dreams. And none of us are immune to this. As I said, I, I will have to work on this every single day um, and just always keeping yourself in this growth oriented mindset. Because when I'm saying I'm just focused on learning and experimenting, I find that I'm able to push forward and it doesn't have the first version is going to be ugly and it's going to be very raw, but you know, done is sometimes yeah. done is better than nothing. So, right. so don't let perfection stop you. Oh, thank you for sharing that for sure. How do you give back? There, uh, you know, I give back in, in multiple ways, but, uh, you know, I give back to my church and support their mission and programs that they're doing across the world. But the other main way I give back is through the charitable arm of my real estate company, um, Clear Vision Investing. So part of our profits is donated to um, curing preventable blindness worldwide. So we wow. support um, cataract surgeries, vision cure to people who can't afford it, you know, both in the U S and abroad, particularly in developing countries, yes. um, because 90% of vision loss is preventable or treatable. Yes. So can you imagine that? Like, 
someone is blind and yeah. they could be treated with a simple pair of glasses or a simple 10 minute cataract surgery yeah. no, or I... medicines that cost less than a buck. Yeah. Um, yeah. But people remain needlessly blind. So that is like a huge mission of mine. And um, it, I've just seen the major effects that it has on people. You know, I, I'll just tell you one example is I remember this mom who was blind when she gave birth to her child. So she had oh. never seen the face of her child. So wow. she was able to get cataract surgery when her son was five years old. And for the first time after she got the wow. cataract surgery and took the patch off, saw the son's face for the first That's time. Amazing. Can you imagine that? That's I mean, yeah. yeah. So it's just stories like that, that yeah. keeps me like, no one needs to be blind, you know, yes. unnecessarily. So those right. are, those are two ways I give back. I agree. Thank you. How can my listeners reach out to you? The best way is to go, go to my website is clearvisioninvesting.com. And you could also email me at nancy at clearvisioninvesting.com. I am also on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook. So feel free to connect with me there, but I would love to um, connect with anyone who wants to chat. Thank you so much, Nancy, for your time. I literally had a lot of fun. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Matters podcast. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating on iTunes so others can enjoy the show too. Have a great week and happy investing.